Okay, welcome. Um, if you're joining us, uh, we are back with some more parents from RHCC. We were managed to bring in a few dads from our congregation, and we thought we'd hear from them, see how life has been for them being home um, with their families and trying to work from home and also um, just get to enjoy their families in this time. Um, we have Sean Hurley, we have Shane Morgan, Steven Sardisco and Mike Cooley. Um, thanks guys for joining us. Uh, Want to just jump right in and ask you guys, what is maybe some a fun memory that you have gotten to make with your kids so far in quarantine? If I'm the pastor, do I have to go first? Yeah. Okay. That's how that goes. <laughs> so, you know, one of the things that's happened that's been kind of fun is just, uh, I'm home a lot more at nights, which isn't that normal for me during uh, during regular life, right? Like I spend a lot of nights mm -hmm. out doing just church work and that's just not happening anymore, which is great. And so I've got a lot more time just with the kids in the evening. And one of the things we ended up doing is we ended up being playing spike ball, I think uh, every night for this week. And oh, I love spike and now ball. It's it a is good this game. standing game that's happening and we got the same teams, the same boys are playing. And I think I'd played that with them once in the last year. Um, but this kind of new thing has kind of brought about just a chance to do that, which has been something unexpected and is awesome and something that I'll be doing here in probably another four hours. So that's great. That's it's one of my favorite games. Yeah. It's a good it's a good one. Yeah, I guess I'll go. Um I'm Steven and uh my boys are five and two and a half. And so at that age, it's just a lot of getting them outdoors. And so we're fortunate enough to have a, a front yard at our home. And I had bought a like a little bounce house for them uh, last year. And so at that preschool age, every single day before nap and after nap, we've just been out there. They've just been jumping, having fun. Um, and they're still at that age where yard work is fun for them. And so I feel like they're... <laughs> They love helping me out, and I feel like there may come a time where they don't want to do that anymore, but for now, that's what they're doing, and they love it, so it's been pretty good. That's awesome. Helping dad. Yeah. What about you, Shane? You have little kids, too. I do. I've got a two- and a three-year-old, um, so not too much has changed um, as far as, you know, with them, like kind of Sean said. I'm just home a lot more. Um you know, working from, from the bedroom. So I, I would say that one of the kind of most favorite memories so far, we, we did a scavenger hunt um, kind of just in our complex. We live in a condo complex. Um, so we had to go find pine cones or grass or flowers or um, pine needles. And so we kind of just did that. Um, I think we're doing it again today. My daughter Kylie requested it um, again after naps this afternoon. So yeah, I mean, I think just the just the time together, the consistent time together, um, my schedule is kind of all over the place. So I think just being able to kind of, you know, know the next day, like, hey, we can do this. Hey, we can do this, um, you know, and just and just have that consistent time together. And a lot of Frozen 2, um, a lot of a lot of Frozen 2 has uh, we've also watched. That's so great. You know, I have to tell you, your wife's Instagram stories of Kylie, the funniest things I've ever seen. You, ha She is so, just such a personality. It's so fun to watch. Yes, she is. And uh, she doesn't change from uh, home to school to church. Uh, that's always her. No. <laughs> yeah. So fun. How about you, Mike? Uh, well, normally, well, thank you for joining me in my home office. Um, so <laughs> before March 2020, it was pretty normal for me to be working here at this desk. And uh, so when our kids would come home from school, a lot of times if I had done my tasks, I might get to play with them. But I think even despite them being home and me still being home trying to stay productive, I'd say the quality time has also increased a lot in quantity, even from starting from a real nice plateau that I got to enjoy before. Um, you know, the boys were really amped to do baseball, and that got canceled like one week in. 
And yeah. so what what do we have? Well, we've been playing basketball and football and extending all that they learned in those two seasons that just basically concluded. So um, and then for Kira, my daughter as well, you know, just being around her and kind of getting to see the kids do uh, be the unit that they are as siblings together has been, you know, um, great. And uh, Kimber and I get to participate in that as well as kind of witness it at the same time. That's awesome. Yeah, super fun. So, um, guys, what what are some things that have maybe been challenging coming into this season um, or maybe a little bit more of a um, is just taking time to adjust to um, a new rhythm? Yeah, I think working from home is a challenge. I think uh, that's not new for me. So uh, I was joking with you before. I feel like I'm about 40 percent as efficient as I usually am. So um, it's just hard to kind of figure out how to do this. I've never worked from home before, so I think I'm, yeah. I'm learning on the spot and trying to do phone calls while kids are skateboarding and playing basketball and and Roombas are running into doors and, and all sorts of things like that. Uh, the other part that's been maybe a little bit unexpected is just how Melinda and I have to watch how we talk about the virus at, at all times. Uh, my older yeah. two don't, don't care, but my younger two are like really sensitive to that. Like they will, they will hear what we're talking about and they will go silent and key in and then we're kind of trying to undo and reduce their fears so we're just finding that all parts of life are just kind of being renegotiated by this whole thing yeah and i think i mean that's important too trying to figure out especially when you have young kids how when all of a sudden all the conversations are right there out in the open <laughs> everybody's in close quarters um yeah how do you talk about it without creating lots of fear in them and yet kind of saying hey this is serious and we need to make sure we're washing our hands and doing um, and being careful and this is the reason why schools close and this is the reason why we're doing all these things but yeah that's a tricky tricky one to navigate for sure yeah and i'd i'd second that i feel like um my oldest even though he's five I think we've talked about the virus a couple times in front of him, but he's he's at the point where he's like praying for it every night, like, dear God, mm -hmm. please help the coronavirus go away. And so it's, yeah, I think it's being sensitive of not talking about it too much. Um, also just, it's been different. Um, home life is usually just like, when we're all home, it's like, let's spend time with each other and relax, but now it's kind of navigating um, who's gonna work in the bedrooms when, who's gonna, be watching the kids and yeah it's been challenging i've had to change a few more diapers than i would normally have to change but um it just gives me a greater appreciation for the work that you know my wife does too it's like all the fights that she has to break up during the day and like <laughs> it's yeah pretty crazy but it's been good yeah. you know, so <laughs> yeah yeah i would imagine because your boys are kind of at the age where they're probably starting to wrestle a little bit more and get themselves into yeah things <laughs> yeah yeah so the oldest is into star wars and i don't think the youngest knows what that is but he just likes to shoot people with his hands and pretend his fingers are lightsabers and just slice people's heads and it's yeah it's it's fun <laughs> yeah and samantha's trying to navigate working from home two at the same time right so you guys are kind of both working parents trying to balance yeah that. yeah so i mean i can kind of hear them right now in the background it's just, <laughs> i think it's a lot of it's teamwork um yeah but i think a lot of it's just being understanding you know of, of my wife that she has some stuff to do especially helping out with the social media stuff for the church it's you know can be a lot and so just trying to be supportive um the best i can i guess but yeah all right so for for the morgans um what we thought was going to be a challenge um so this kind of thing hit and um we knew it'd kind of be a while so we were gonna we were thinking let's potty train our two-year-old uh we thought it was going to be a challenge um he literally was potty trained in a day and so we we're like what? all right well that was very quick so yeah he's kind of good to go um so we thought that was going to be a challenge but but that definitely was not a challenge um 
but I think uh, just like the guys have said, just kind of navigating the being home more, being, um, you know, I think what I've come out of all of this is I never could be a stay at home dad. Um, <laughs> I think that my wife has been just, I mean, through this and through everything, just unbelievable to be able to, I mean, like the guys have said, there's fights, there's arguments, we're fighting over blocks that we have multiples of, um, but they want each other's stuff. And then we then we wrestle and roll around on the floor. So I think just kind of getting used to that. Um, it's definitely, I think, been the hardest on me. My wife's like, this is awesome. My kids are like, dad's home more. This is beautiful. Me, I'm like, I got to get out of the house. I got to go do something. I got to go play basketball. Um, so I think the adjustment's been more on me than than anybody else, my kids. And and wife have been amazing and and uh it's been super fun for them and just you know seeing them kind of interact more and and uh you know we're we're going we're doing homeschool with kylie and um you know just doing the lessons that that the preschool kind of has given us and online yeah. stuff and abcs and that kind of stuff and parker's learning them now at two so uh you know He's gonna be ahead, and then I can be the dad that like, oh look, my how smart my kid is. We've been in quarantine <laughs> for a month and a half, so you know he he can do that kind of stuff. But no, it's been it's been good. It's been challenging, like the guys have said, but overall it's been it's been a blessing. Um, when you look at it uh, in the in the whole scheme of things. Great. How about yeah, you? I echo what Shane said. I think, you know, my wife Kimber stepped into the void uh, for the homeschool necessity, taking the baton from all the good people at Christ Lutheran. Uh, and she's yeah. just done an amazing job. I haven't had to really be anything other than maybe like the playground supervisor, you know. <laughs> um, so I'm I'm not tasked with having to manage any of the learning that's going on and so much is still going on thanks to her and her efforts. Um, which is, you know, that's good because I'm trying to make my business survive, you know, these times yeah. and that's, that's co-opted my, my time and attention. Um, so I appreciate that we've had a divide and conquer kind of mentality, uh, to make yeah. the best of it. And, um, you know, the, the proximity of being together, I, I probably a little stir crazy after these two weeks. And I think this coming week is going to be very telling in terms of maybe what the overall outlook might be to when anybody can reasonably re anticipate a return to normal. Um, yeah. So those remain the challenges, but, you know, if you're going to be on a lifeboat, boat, you might as well be on a lifeboat boat with your wife and kids. True. That's true. Um, so what, what has been for you guys has been kind of maybe unexpected blessings or things that God, you've seen God do in your family um in this season despite maybe any hard things that you've also had to kind of work through mm -hmm. yeah one of the surprises for us has been just um how meaningful and deep our, our family times of prayer have been like they've really caught me off guard like we've we've done that after dinner where we'll gather together and say okay let's pray and you know um with kids sometimes those are just you know difficult times for them to focus, for them to listen to someone else pray and not, you know, be fully engaged. There's struggles sometimes through that. Like, I think anybody who's ever tried to do family devotionals or family prayer times, you know, like, it can be hard for the kids. And yet, in this season, it's got their attention a little bit more, and it's been shockingly really good, really meaningful. Um, and it's it's been fun to see kind of what God's maybe been doing under the surface of my kids, um, that you haven't really gotten to see it until like the whole system is stressed and then you get to see some of that development. That's been something I, I never expected and it, it really caught me off guard. It's been a total blessing in this time. Yeah, I, ours family, um, just to piggyback on what Sean was saying, it's, it's the depth of spiritual development and character development and that has been kind of percolating for our kids is something I've been able to witness. We uh, are reading through Proverbs together at every meal and where the kids are reading the scripture and then Kimber and I will kind of, you know, sum it up and point to the lessons. <laughs> and Proverbs is great because it's so efficient um, in what it wants to tell you. Straight to the point. <laughs> yeah, but at the same time, 
the so the unexpected blessing of it is especially with Kai seeing his reading proficiency as a second grader like I didn't really have a grasp of how good his reading had become because of the pace of life before this this time and so that, you know, it's just like it's tremendous to see the, you know my littlest become a little intellectual and and then the way all three of them weigh the considerations and lessons uh, about wisdom and the pursuit of wisdom that proverbs offers the the timing couldn't be better uh we're not laying at their feet all the seriousness of what's going on i think like sean said you know our youngest our, our kids are younger and we don't want them to carry it as a burden but they are understanding i think more uh, whole, in a more wholesome way what the scripture has to say in that book right now for their lives individually that i think it will be very valuable to have shared that time with them and have them lead us through that book um so yeah that's amazing Um, um, for us, oh, go ahead. Okay, I'll talk. No, um, go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, yeah, I think for us, um, yeah, I mean, like I said, like the kids are so pretty young, but one of the big things has just been the, like the resources that church has provided for us to do the um, children's like Bible lessons from home. And like because throughout the day sometimes we'll like we'll play and we'll do like normal normal routine stuff like snack time um nap time and stuff but when like sunday morning comes and we actually do like the the crafts with them with like little cotton balls on the sheep or like playing the games yeah. with them um like their faces just kind of light up and it's just been so encouraging to see like i don't know i just feel like there's like a deeper connection that happens when we even do a game that's like has like the spiritual um idea behind it and we're able to explain it to them um yeah i just think that that kind of helps them during this time you know when they're not going out as much or seeing as many people so that's been really good yeah steven just to kind of piggyback on that i have so many cotton balls all over my house because of those <laughs> because of those crafts yeah <laughs> uh, i'm still picking up cotton balls and i think the craft was like from a week ago so um <laughs> No, like 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 the guys have said, just just kind of family time. Uh, before we go to bed each night, the kids uh, jump on my lap and we read through the entire Bible. Granted, it's just a little picture Bible, but um, you know the kids love it, and and that's kind of what they expect now. And and since I'm home, you know, every night, that's uh, kind of a cool thing for them to look forward to. Um, you know, get in your pajamas and climb up on dad and, and then we get to, you know, read God's word. Um, granted they're two and three, so it's, you know, stories and pictures and we're calling out all the animals and, you know, that kind of stuff. But, uh, you know, it's fun. It's a good base. It's a, um, you know, it's a fun thing to just do as family, um, while Jess gets to relax a little bit before bed. But, um, no, I mean, it's been, it's, it's I think, I mean, I think we're all going to kind of look back at this and, be like so much good came out of all of this um you know because we're we're staying tight to tight to god and and we're staying tight to family so i mean i think that i mean coming out of all this for a lot of people the the quarantine time's just gonna give, just gonna show how important family is and how important our belief in jesus christ is um so, i mean i look at it as a positive um you know coming out of it even though it's killing me currently <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I agree. Um, I think one of the things that I know my staff has been praying for and I've been praying for is just that families would be strengthened during this time. Um, it's interesting because we've had lots of conversations about, okay, how can we engage parents and how can we do this and do that? And we had all these ideas. And it's funny because all of a sudden in a matter of one week all of the things that we had put on the back burner as dreams of things that we would love to do 
all of a sudden normal programs and ministry just got completely ripped from us. And it was like, oh, okay. So ministry is going to look very different and we're going to start to practice and try to, <laughs> we're going to pray for families and we're going to kind of rely a lot more on parents to, to do that discipleship, um, which was a core value we had to begin with. But um, as soon as you take away being able to meet in a physical space, um, it, it changes, changes things. So, but it's been, it's been really cool to get to pray for families and just knowing that God's meeting you guys in your families, exactly where you're at. And, um, I'm just excited to see when we do finally all get to be back together again, what, what that's going to look like as a, our whole church. Um, as we kind of wrap up a little bit, just what would be one encouragement that you would give maybe to another dad in our community um, for this season? Yeah, so uh, I care a ton about this. This is probably closest to my heart. It's, I mean, our world's never seen anything like this, right? We've never been through something uh, like this before. And I don't know if we ever will again. I mean, maybe this virus will come back around and we'll be back in the spot, but um you know, I think Mikey said like about Proverbs, like make the most of the moments, you know, the seasons, recognize the season that you're in. And um, this is just a very unique season where we get to be home more with our family more. Um, if you've got young kids, invest in them more. And um, it is probably better for your work to suffer a little bit for you to invest in your kids more in the season. Like if you have to pick, don't miss this moment with your family. Um, it might not come around again. Um, and don't fill your time full of the things that don't matter, the silly things that could suck up your time. It's just every minute is precious always, but especially in this season that's your home, make really make the most of it. All right, that was I'll just go. a mic drop. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh. Okay, so for yeah, I just to echo what what Pastor said, um, definitely just think uh, just time, just spending good quality time um, with your kids, whether they're super young um, or older. Um, I just think that that's ever fleeting in our world. I mean, we kind of, especially as as guys, as as dads, I feel like we we try to pack our schedules and, and, and maybe don't always, um, put just good family time, uh, with the TV off, just hanging out, playing, um, spike ball, uh, games, board games, whatever. Um, so I think it's just a great time to do that. Um, I also think it's a great time to, to just invest in, you know, the marriage, uh, with, I mean, my wife and I have been able to just have, awesome conversations just strictly because there's not too much going on right now uh we put our kids to bed and you know are able to talk and clean up the house and do dishes together and um you know read the bible pray together i mean so it's just it's just a it's just a time to you know stop and and kind of refocus you know our lives our families our marriages um you know, our relationship with Jesus Christ. Um, so, I mean, you know, I think that at least for me, it's, it's hard to, when everything's going on, you know, kind of stop and just, you know, kind of take, take in, you know, all that God's given us and blessed us with, and, um, you know, just the amazing families that we have and the kids that we do have to be able to invest time and energy and effort into them, uh, on a daily basis. Yeah, I mean, for me, I, I totally agree, um, like with Sean and Shane about, I think it's easy, um, I guess, as a guy and as a dad to, you know, think of ministry as maybe sometimes just serving at church and in a capacity or going to work and providing. But I think I've been reminded that, like, you know, my family is also my ministry, like being a dad and being a husband and um, just the different things that I'm called to do, like, you know, love my wife. Um, train my children and be understanding and I think 
it's definitely a season where it's it's like uh, it can be viewed as like a trial but it's an area where it's an opportunity for all of us to grow you know and i think um sometimes you know like our culture or media wants us to look really far ahead and i think that can sometimes like be distracting like it can cause fear when when is the world gonna begin again but i was just thinking the other day when about like how jesus taught us to pray like praying for our daily bread and i think just taking it day by day and um just being in constant communion with god and not worrying about the future because just like jesus says like today there's there's enough for us to to be concerned about and so um yeah i would just say that and just being in constant communion with god would be i guess my advice yeah i think the I think the call remains to all of us fathers is that we need to be godly men and the distractions that have fallen away or been ripped away or been postponed or whatever um, allow for us in this time to answer the call that's always been there, uh, maybe in a stronger way or a more effective way with our kids and with our uh, spouses than before. Um, so that, that's that's what I would encourage others with and try to remain encouraged by is that now is the time to be godly, uh, to trust in the Lord, you know, build our relationship with the Lord, trust in providence from the Father and know that the Spirit is with us and will work through us to our kids, our neighbors, um, you know, whoever we have the benefit of seeing seven feet from us for the time being. <laughs> Or, you know, uh, on calls like this, uh, our yeah. community is a great one. And, you know, that's because God is alive here. Awesome. That's good. Well, thank you guys so much for joining me today. And um, really appreciate you taking your time um, to just have a conversation. So really, really enjoy it. It's been a good time. So, um yeah, we will uh, see you guys when we can all be in the same split place again. <laughs> you're doing a great job. And your team are killing it. Thanks for all that you're doing for families and, and all of us. Even these little videos are, Thanks, are meaningful and important in times when you're scattered like we are. So thank you. Yeah, you know, it's been Thanks, fun. Michelle. It's been really, really fun. So yeah. the, Lord's, the Lord's got to figure it out. So yeah, we'll just does. keep showing up. Awesome. Well, I will let you guys go and um, we'll talk to you soon. Later. Bye, guys. Thanks, Rochelle. Bye, guys.